My name is John Hartman. I'm from Ramsey, Minnesota. I will be carrying the yellow flower for the caregivers, and I care for Canada Yesbeck. Canada was diagnosed, she had this problem with uh, washing her hair one day. She couldn't go through the process of washing her hair. And she knew at that point in time that she needed to get tested. She has number seven in her family to be diagnosed with this illness. Canada is an amazing mother, loves these children with all her soul. And that's the hard part for me, is that she's gonna not remember them because of this disease. I need to start having more of a voice. And by this opportunity to speak about the caregivers and what we go through and the struggles that we have on a daily basis. Excuse me. Watching our loved ones d deteriorate in front of us. As a caregiver, you, you have to understand that there's outlets out there. You have to be able to reach out. Finding a cure. Finding a cure for this disease. Because it's, it's destructive to everyone around. <sighs> My name is Kay Lovis Jewell and I'm from Mendota Heights and I'm carrying the purple flower to honor my husband Ralph Jewell who died six years ago from Alzheimer's. He was a individual that loved life to the fullest, very optimistic, very positive person, a very smart person. And because of that, I think there were many years that he coped very well. For me, I think the hardest thing was to constantly adjust to whatever the circumstances that we had today. My message is it's a horrible disease. It's a disease without a treatment or a cure but you don't have to treat it as the end of your life. There is a way to live with Alzheimer's and work to make the best of it. Today was the best day it's gonna to be. Tomorrow's only gonna to be just a titch worse. And so enjoy today, make the most of it. I'm Nadia Ramirez and I'm holding the orange flower because I support the Alzheimer's Association. I feel the need to, to help the need for advocacy in marginalized communities, the need for advocacy and for voices to be heard, for able-bodied people to be able to act and listen and learn. And I think that's where the foundation really starts, learning and, and listening to those who are affected, the families that are affected, and, and seeing how you can help. And it may look like just walking, it may look like holding a flower, but it could look like other things too. And if I could be that outlet, if I could just listen to that voice, I think that's an important thing. And if I'm able to do that, I, I don't see a reason why I shouldn't. Hello, my name is Sean Rorick. I uh, live up with my family in Maple Grove, Minnesota. And about a year and a half ago, I was diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's. And we knew that was coming because on my dad's side he was one of 13 children and eight of his siblings died from either dementia or Alzheimer's. I'm okay with what I've got because I know I can't change it and I know I can't fix it. My wife is my rock. We talked a little bit earlier today because she's very concerned about when it will be harder for me or uh, maybe not appropriate for me to be driving a car and she says but then I feel a little guilty because I know you like driving and I looked at her and I said the last thing I want to do is hurt anyone myself my family or somebody else at a, at a signal light by going through it without realizing I did it which took a big chunk of hurt off of her because she was kind of worried you have to excuse me these tend to at 61 they tend to leak a little more than they used to I'm quite aware that at the end of this journey, she's gonna see some really icky stuff that nobody wants to see a spouse go through. I am hoping to get into some of the studies that they're doing on medications for Alzheimer's because I want the next generation to have something that will be a cure 